quarterback right out of the shoot. Yeah. Can you just talk about what you've seen on film about Cordero? Yeah, just, you know, real, real slippery, you know, has, uh, can make a bad play good, you know, and so that that's, uh, I mean, in, any more, you know, the surprise as a, as a defense to, to say you got a scrambling quarterback. I mean, if you're surprised by it in this day and age, shame on you. So, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's our expectation every single week. It doesn't make it any easier to defend, you know. And so, you know, both found this, the, uh, you know, the ability to get yards downfield, just extend plays, and man, it thins you out, you know, in every which way. And so it's easy to say to spy a guy and all that stuff. That means you're not rushing as many as you like to rush or you're not putting as many guys in cover. So, yeah, it's, it, it gives you major fits. So it always has and always will. What was the big factor in moving Lucas from Russian to the end late in camp? Yeah, just continue to move guys around, trying to get the best 11 on the field. I mean, none, none of those those edge positions for us um, are, are, are so similar. Um, and, and so, you know, from a job description standpoint, we, we feel very confident moving moving guys back and forth and best, you know, trying to get the best, I guess, four in the front and then the best four behind them. And so whether you're to the field is to the boundary, two-point stance or three-point stance, I, uh, trying to be multiple that way. And so he, he's a guy that can do both those things, as mu uh, you know, other guys as well. So we expect him to to play both those spots. I know how talented a guy like Delani is, but when he's coming off injuries and he is, just, what are some of the main hurdles that you're kind of looking for in the past to kind of get, get back to who we, who we expect him to be, who yeah. we know him? Yeah, I think for you know, a young guy in, in particular, when you add the, the injury component, you know, and we tried to force feed him a little bit when we could a year ago. It probably wasn't completely fair to him, to be honest with you. But there's only one way to get better. It's, it's game reps, and obviously, to get those game reps, you got to do on the practice field. And so, you know, Sterling was not 100% last year, and, and uh, um, but but had a good spring for us. And then I think just as you get the cumulative reps, the confidence comes with it. You know, and, and you see so many different things. The nice thing for him is he's been healthy. He was kind of kind of supposed to be on a pitch count in spring and then very, very quickly, you know, kind of came off of that and kept going, kept going, kept going, which allowed him to have a good good spring in terms of volume. Same thing into the summer, which he didn't get a year ago. Either of those two things. Um, and then been, been, been healthy and working and uh, no, could not be any higher than on, on the mind. I mean, it, it's, now you got to go do it on Saturdays. We, we understand that. But uh, no, I've been very pleased with him. So it's, a, it's an exciting young player. It seems like uh, Tackett getting a lot of, you know, run with the first team right now against the, the scout team. Do you expect he's going to play a lot of snaps in week one against him? Yeah, he'll have a major uh, you know, part of the defense. You know, the guy that's here in the spring and, and, and you know, plays the game right away and could not be more positive on Tackett. I mean, for a freshman to come in here and, and you know, learn, understand, but, but, but you know, also kind of be the model how you want you know, a guy to play. You know, and, and it's been one of those guys that you know, the head coach has, has pointed to in team meetings just from a, um, you know, an effort standpoint. Now you got to make sure he's going in the right direction. But he's one of those guys that you know, the direction is going to be the football eventually, right? So um, some, sometimes there's other responsibility before you got to just go see and hit the thing. But, uh, that's a pretty good quality to, to start with. Is that something you knew coming out of spring camp, or did injuries during fall camp kind of accelerate that? Yeah, I mean, I think injuries in, in any position just of, you know give give guys an opportunity to, to maybe get where they would get four you know four reps in the period, they get eight reps in the period or something like that. Now you got to be smart that way that you're not uh, you know overusing guys. But uh, no, it, it gives a guy a chance to all of a sudden instead of running with the, the the threes early on, he runs with the twos or the twos with the ones, um, and and that the expectation goes up right as the, as the group goes up type of thing, and so. Um, no, he, he's taking advantage of that, and uh, uh, I think he's, a, like I said, a, a very good young prospect that we're excited about. Has Jamil exceeded expectations coming over from Georgia State? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think for all those guys we bring in, I mean, you, you, you bring them in with high expectations. Now, now, now what, what, you know, what's the ceiling on any of those, those individuals? And I say those individuals being transfers, right? You've, you've seen a body of work on film. Um, but as, as we say, if, if the body of work was, was elite, they, they would no longer be in college. That's how it works, right? So there's still something that we got to work towards. And, and, but I've been very pleased with him just from a, a, a consistency standpoint, a competitive standpoint. He's strong. You know, he's a, he's a former skill guy that, uh, and some of those guys still think they're skill guys type of thing, which is okay. Uh, likes for us to pass for a little bit, but, uh, uh, which we need that too. So I, I've been, uh, been pleased with him. So to answer your questions, I, 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 you know, we're getting some games and really get a sense of it, but been, been pleased with him thus far. Alex, you've talked about the, the expectation standard that you want to set for, for this defense. Obviously late last year, you know, things didn't meet that particular standard. Sure. Going into this, you know, year, a lot of talk, a lot of chatter, just, just from week one, you know, 
what do you kind of expect from, from this defense? What do you expect from, from yourself heading to kind of the pivotal season? Yeah, I, I think, you know, every season is pivotal. I mean, and every season is, is, is new. Right? We, we don't get credit. I, I know you're probably referencing the three losses. And, and just on the same note, we could reference the 11 wins, and we don't get credit for those going into the 23 season. So, you know, what you got to do is you got to make sure you coach the 23 team. You got to coach these guys, and it's it's you know uh, new scars and old scars and all that, and they, they have theirs. We got ours, but 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 also those those are you know tremendous opportunities to you know reference and, and learn from. You know, obviously the fourth quarter deficiencies last year, to, to think that we haven't highlighted those and circled that and made a major emphasis uh, would, would be would be inaccurate, um, which had a major impact. As you tell the guys, 15 minutes can change the whole season, um, and, and you have you know a couple weekends that way. 30 minutes on a 12 month, you know, on 12 month scale, and 30 minutes, 45 minutes changes your entire world. And so, just having an understanding of that. And so, what what that does, I'm just referencing that as, as, as much as anything, because you know you got to learn from those things and, and reference that. And, but no, awfully excited to get on the field with these guys, and, and we understand the challenges starting this weekend. You talked a lot about tackling last season, and that that one guy who kind of has to finish the play. Where is your group at in terms of those categories? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, we, we've tackled as much as, as, as you probably can, you know, responsibly, you know, I mean, you, you can obviously go off the deep end and, and um, you know, maybe hit too much type of thing. And, and, and we're all trying to find what that, that balance is. You know, one of the things that we, we did, uh, you know, the, this off season uh, in spring ball and fall camp is we've gone to the ground every single day. Now, we're not taking bodies to the ground every single day, but, but it, you know, we, we felt like it just needs to be more commonplace that, you know, at, at the end of a play, you know, as a defender, you know, that, that you're not on two feet. And, and so that's a small thing, but that, that just gives you, you know, it's all it comes down to small things. And so that's one of the things that, that we've done. And so, but you get, yeah, you got to do it on game day. You got to make sure that uh, as best you can, you try to get multiple guys to the, the point of attack, you know, spread offense, as you mentioned, it's random quarterbacks makes it very difficult to have that on every single down. And one of the things that we, we worked really hard at is, is defining you know, we talk about expectations, but but also defining, you know, what what, what right execution is, and, and what, and then on the other side of it, what would be wrong execution, which would be the errors. And you know, sometimes you quantify as a mental error, and I don't know that that's accurate. And sometimes you can say that it's, you know, missed assignment. I don't know if if you ask the guy what the assignment was, he would know. And, and so we've defined it as expectation errors as much, as much as anything. If you don't expect yourself to be at the point of attack or expect the ball to be in your gap. You know, there's not a major, a magic coaching point that's going to get you in that position. So we can tell you where it is, but you got to expect to make the play when you get there, type of thing. And so some of that comes with reps, and some of that comes with experience and confidence and all those things. Um, and then beyond that, we got to make sure that we take the practice field, we do right on the practice field, and take it in the game. But um, that, that's that's what game one is all about. You know, that's, football requires tackles, so let's not be surprised by it. Let's do one more. What does Mason Dunn earn captain status? Yeah, just uh, you know. Uh, we, we've, you know, from from a character standpoint, you know, checks every box. From an effort standpoint, checks every box. And then from a, you know, execution standpoint, you know, that I just mentioned, you know, the expectation errors. And that's that's kind of been the thing that we've circled and shown the guys in defensive meetings and that said, no, 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 that's an expectation error. And, and no one can fix an expectation error. This is on, you know, this, this is the scar of the letter as we, we define it for the guys. If you don't expect to make a play, you know, the answer is to get you off the field. And so I bring that up. Again, just simply because Mason is one of those guys that expects to make the play on every single down. Um, and you can see it. You can see his mentality. I think that it, it uh, is one of those things that not just as a coaching staff we can see it, the players can see it. Um, and so that, that, that creates kind of the model. And he's been the model since he's been here. And so uh, been, been very pleased with him up to this point. So excited to see him go. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you.